right. that orb there. What is I that? I know. This is an example of one of the awards that go to all of the winners tonight. It's created by glass artist Dick Huss. Oh, mm -hmm. what a preface for what's going on I know. and what's going to happen for the rest of this evening, you know? Yes, it was a wonderful beginning, and we'd like to credit our sponsor, Alaris. Oh, well, you know something? Without further ado, we should get going. We huh? should. Welcome. Welcome to the 32nd Annual Minnesota Book Awards. My name is Elaine Hopkins. I'm Director of Programs and Services for the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library. And I'm so pleased to be able to welcome you to this evening of celebration of Minnesota writers, admittedly under slightly different circumstances than we had imagined. If you're new to the Minnesota Book Awards, welcome. This is a year-long program that connects readers and writers statewide with the stories of our neighbors. And it's made possible through the generous support of many, especially our presenting sponsor, Education Minnesota. I would like to thank all of the sponsors and organizations who make this program possible, listed out in the pre-show credits and at the end, so do stick around. I'd also like to give a huge shout out to our partners here at SPNN, who are literally making this possible right now from their studios in St. Paul. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be announcing winners in nine categories tonight. This has not been previously recorded, so you will be seeing um, and hearing their names live here for the first time. We're even going to call the winners to get their immediate reactions. We'll also be celebrating three special award winners that have been previously announced, the Book Artist, Hognander Minnesota History, and Kay Sexton Award winners. Make sure to follow and tag us on social media. We want to hear your comments about the books, the authors, the event. And if you have chosen to dress up for the occasion, by all means, send us a selfie. We're so glad you're with us. As we begin this evening, we want to acknowledge the Dakota people, indigenous keepers of the land from which we broadcast tonight. This land was reserved by the Dakota in the Treaty of Traverse de Sioux, signed by the United States in 1851, and remains sacred to them today. We'd also like to acknowledge the Ojibwe people, fellow indigenous inhabitants of this land. Dakota and Ojibwe people are also the original stewards of story here in this place we now call Minnesota. And the Friends wants to honor that tradition and the knowledge and values embedded in it as we work to lift up storytellers in our state today. The Minnesota Book Awards is truly a statewide program, and so we couldn't be more pleased to have a special welcome message from Peggy Flanagan, a mom, a member of the White Earth Band of Ojibwe, and Minnesota's 50th Lieutenant Governor. Hi, Minnesota. This is Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan. Tonight, we celebrate virtually the stories and voices that connect us as Minnesotans. The Minnesota Book Awards celebrate people of all backgrounds from every corner of our state who are brave enough to share their stories so that we all have the chance to see the world through someone else's eyes. It is in lifting up these many voices that we may find beauty in our differences and comfort in our commonality. In these uncertain times, we can turn to stories and to art to help us build community and connection with one another. Tonight, we have a new opportunity, the chance to gather together as many readers and writers as we can in the first ever live stream Minnesota Book Awards ceremony. Thank you for joining us tonight. Stay safe, Minnesota, and keep reading. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor Flanagan. And now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our host for the evening, T. Michael Rambo. T. Michael is a regional Emmy award-winning actor, a vocalist, arts educator, and public speaker. He's made an indelible mark in the Twin Cities, performing principal roles as, at such theaters as the Guthrie, 10,000 Things, Penumbra, Children's Theater, and Minnesota Opera, to name just a very few. T. Michael, I am so thrilled that you're here tonight. Uh. Well, I thank you, and it's a delight for me to be here as well. You know, it's really great to be able to share in this evening's festivities to celebrate Minnesota writers. As an emerging writer myself, I'm writing a little children's book working on it right now, Imogene, the Fashion Queen, and the Missing Sock. Wait for it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, in any event, we'd like to recognize the support provided by our presenting sponsor, Education Minnesota, the state's educators' union, representing 70,000 professional working together for excellence in education for all students. Speaking to Education Minnesota's commitment to learning and literature is Vice President Bernie Burnham. 
The educators of Minnesota are proud once again to sponsor the Minnesota Book Awards. We do it because we as educators can't do our jobs without a steady supply of good books coming into the world. Let me explain. Education Minnesota is the labor union of educators from all over the state, from preschool teachers to paraprofessionals to classroom teachers to instructors in the state's two-year colleges and even some professors in the University of Minnesota system. If you asked any of those educators what they want for their students, they would probably give you some variation of this answer. I want my students to become lifelong learners and curious adults. We don't always succeed, of course, but we often do light that fire in our students and inspire the habits of mind that bring people into libraries, bookstores, and even online celebrations of the written world. The intellectual curiosity that comes from reading books has never been more important than this spring. Staying home to stay safe doesn't mean you can't free your mind. Books for children can mean mental journeys to a mysterious shack in the woods, daydreams of flying as a bird, or rowing away in a world of oceans. Or for our older readers, a dive into the history of the state, the stories of the lost town of Chippewa City, economic influence of slavery here, or even some boozy tales of Minnesota saloons, taverns, and dives. One of my favorites being the Fitker's Brew House in Duluth, Minnesota. So why again are Minnesota educators spending their dues money on the book awards? We do it because we care about kids, both who they are and who they will become. And in that future, we want them to be happy, curious, and well-read. And that will take time, educators, love, and a whole shelf full of books. From all of us at Education Minnesota, thank you authors for all you do for the lifelong learners of our state. Thank you so much, Bernie. We're so appreciative of the work that you do with Education Minnesota and for this partnership. So many people. So many people have had a hand in leading up to this evening's extremely wonderful celebration. Grateful for all their time, their energy, and creativity. Don't forget to register online at thefriends.org that you are attending the awards ceremony tonight for a chance to get a set of the winning books from this evening's celebration. There were, there were over 226 submissions for the nine category awards we'll be presenting tonight. And we have three special awards to bestow with brief videos. Plus, we'll be calling up the winners calling them up as they are announced if the technology gods ha, are with us. <laughs> so let's get ready. Okay. Let's jump right in with the Minnesota nonfiction category. The four finalists, authors in this category, are all new to the awards, which means we are about to announce the first, a first time Minnesota Book Award winner. Now, how exciting is that? Pretty exciting. <clears throat> the finalists are Closing time, saloons, taverns, dives, and watering holes of the Twin Cities by Bill Linicky and Andy Sturdivan, published by Minnesota Historical Society. Slavery's Reach, Southern Slaveholders in the North Star State by Christopher P. Lehman, published by Minnesota Historical Society Press. Tulips, Chocolate, and Silk. Celebrating 65 Years of the James Ford Bell Library by Marguerite Radnow and Natasha de Sormer. De hmm. It's kind of French. I like that. <laughs> Published by the James Ford Bell Library and Walking the Road, A People's History of the Chippewa City and the Grand Marie Anishinaabe by Stacy Lola Drulard. Published by the University of Minnesota Press. Elaine? Are you ready? I'd love to. All right, come on. All right, I never get to do this part. I know. So come on, here we go. The award for Minnesota nonfiction goes to Christopher P. Lehman, Slavery's Reach, Southern Slaveholders in the North Star State. Wow. And I think we may get Christopher on the line. Let's see. Congratulations, Christopher. <laughs> we are so very happy for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to friends at St. Paul Public Library. Thank you to Minnesota Historical Society Press. Thank you to my family. Thank you to my wife, Sapada. 
Well, well, Christopher, we thank you for this incredible book that you've created, and thank you for acknowledging all the loved ones in your life and those who have supported you to bring this book forward and to be a winner, the first time winner of this award in this category. <laughs> thank you. All right. So our next award is for middle grade literature with debut authors and returning finalists sponsored by Education Minnesota. Here are the finalists. The Line Tender by Kate Allen, published by Dutton Children's Books, Penguin Random House. The Lost Girl by Anne Ursu, published by Walden Pond Press, HarperCollins Publishers. The Missing Piece of Charlie O'Reilly by Rebecca K.S. Ansari, published by Walden Pond Press, HarperCollins Publishers. And A Tear in the Ocean by H.M. Bauman, illustrations by Yuku Shimuzu, published by G.P. Putnam Sons, Penguin Random House. Over to you, T. Michael. Oh, this is my <laughs> chance. Oh. And the award goes to, let's see here. This is really sealed. I don't want to get a paper cut. <laughs> don't get a paper all right, cut. All right. The winner for the 32nd Annual Minnesota Book Awards for Middle Grade Literature goes to Kate Allen, The Line Tender. Kate, congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> I bet this is pretty exciting, huh? It's very exciting. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, what do you think about the fact that you have a chance to be among so many amazing authors as an award recipient this year? Um, it's really just amazing. Um, I just, you know, a, the line tender is a, a love letter to Massachusetts where I grew up, but um, it took moving to Minnesota to be able to write it. And I just like to thank the friends. Uh, the Loft, the Minnesota Kidlit community, and my beloved writing group, Supergroup. Um, I have a great respect for the young readers and the librarians, teachers, and booksellers who inspire them. Thank you to Dutton. Thank you to my editor, Andrew Carr, and my agent, Michael Barrett. And I, lastly, I'd like to thank the people closest to my heart, uh, my parents, my in-laws, my friends, my sons, Sam and Leo, and my husband, John, uh, for all of your love and support. Thank you so much. Thank you for being such an inspiration and for being able to bring us such a phenomenal book. I love the cover, by the way. That's really cool. Thank In addition you. to honoring the writers and illustrators for their tremendous work, this evening we also celebrate those who have helped create and improve our literary ecosystem. Next is a special award bestowed on an individual or organization for outstanding contributions to Minnesota's literary community. Named for Kay Sexton, a career bookseller and dedicated arts advocate. The award is sponsored by St. Catharines University, and this year's recipient is James, James Linfesti. We call him Jim around here. <laughs> Let's take a brief look at his exceptional literary life and a short video, and then we can hear from the man himself. The rich literary community that we enjoy in the Twin Cities is comprised of something more than all the presses, writing centers, book clubs, MFA programs, book festivals, and authors. The special and intangible extra is a positive atmosphere that honors the written word and welcomes all who want to create and partake in it. Jim Lenfesty helped create that atmosphere. Jim can always be found organizing, hosting, leading, even just attending literary events, and his excitement is infectious. He's genuinely thrilled to see everyone, to welcome people, to hear the work, to buy a book, to share the joy. He is unfailingly positive, supportive, and enthusiastic to be a part of a literary event in Minnesota. But it is his unbridled enthusiasm his deep work in organizations large and small, and his leadership that have helped make our Minnesota literary ecosystem exceptional. Jim Lenfesty is tireless at bringing people together over worthy causes, and as such he has organized amazing events, such as Poets, Writers, and Musicians Against the War on the Earth, which shows how literature can address environmental concerns. I am also repeatedly cheered that his eco-advocacy takes the shape of letters to the editor, opinion pieces, and columns that have appeared in a variety of newspapers, 
This too is using the medium of writing in the community to address one of the most important issues of our time. It might be the case that Jim's primary work in the local book community was as the chair of the Literary Witnesses reading series based at Plymouth Congregational Church, a post he held for 20 years. In this capacity, he brought to the Twin Cities an astonishing array of writers whose work intersects spiritual and humanistic concerns. In my opinion, the benefit to local audiences to hear from, interact with, and be inspired by such writers is immeasurable. Among those who have made our literary community here what it is, Jim Lenfesti holds a singular place in my experience. He was among the visionaries who conceived of open book and then organized effectively to establish the nation's largest standalone literary and book arts center. He has served on multiple boards, in addition to this impressive record of public service to literary causes, Jim also has a significant record of accomplishment as a writer. He's written nearly a dozen books, including collections of poems, essays, and narrative nonfiction. And he's been a committed and beloved teacher of and mentor to countless writers, many of whom have gone on to enrich our community immeasurably. It's been such a joy for me to come to know Jim I'm so, so pleased to see him getting this recognition. First, the strip cuts my Earth Day at 50 commentary from 1,000 words to 800. Now, the Minnesota Book Awards cuts my K Sexton Award acceptance speech from two minutes to one. My speech on the love of books and the luck of writing. A minute barely gets me through thanking my grandparents and parents, wife, kids and grandkids, one or two pets, the neighborhood, and Mother Nature, and God, who is Mother Nature plus Father Sky, plus the stars and dark matter and before, and Han Shan and Gerard Hopkins and Gary Snyder and Robert Bly and other literary friends far too numerous to mention, but I must mention these. Thomas R. Smith, Jim Sitter, Linda Myers, Peggy Corsmo Kennan, Robert Hedin, and certainly the unparalleled richness of the Minnesota literary ecosystem, Paris on the Prairie, The Loft, MCBA, the Anderson Center, and the presses Noden, Milkweed, Holy Cow, Red Dragonfly, all have nurtured me. And the libraries, my first Minneapolis office, plugging quarters into the typewriters, and the bookstores, how can I not mention the bookstores and the generous book awards themselves? <laughs> I'd have to say that Jim did a pretty good job with that minute. He, he, <laughs> he really got him in there. That's Jim Linfesti. That's the Sex K. Sexton Award recipient. We've only just begun to honor a wonderful range of writers this evening, with more to come. But the strength of this program extends well beyond the award ceremony. Among Jim Lef Linfesti, you know, we're such close friends, <laughs> Linfesti, remarkable contributions to the literary community, Jim has maintained a lifelong commitment to connecting people to ideas in order to inspire philanthropy. That being said, this is a perfect time to ask your help in supporting the Minnesota Book Awards and other programs created by the Friends or Minnesota Center for the Book. Elaine. What exactly is Center for the Book? <laughs> so the Friends is the Center for the Book in Minnesota as designated by the Library of Congress. So with that designation, we're charged with promoting books, reading, and library throughout libraries throughout the entire state. And the Minnesota Book Awards is one way we fulfill that role. Ah. So we know that stories connect us, especially now when we are forced to be apart. Now, the core work of the Book Awards and the Minnesota Center for the Book is to bring more people together through stories. Whether it is adding school visits to the statewide Moving Words Writers Across Minnesota tour, advocating for and receiving funding to pay a stipend to Minnesota Book Awards judges, or even completely changing the plans to hold a virtual ceremony that can still connect Minnesotans even during a pandemic. Whoop, whoop, come on yep. now. <laughs> the Friends is listening to the community and striving to make more connections than ever before. It has been with the help of people, 
people like you that the Friends host award-winning authors in discussion at one local library in each of our state's 12 regional library systems. It is with your help that kindergartners, seniors, book lovers of all ages in between have had these award-winning authors visit their classrooms and libraries in places like um, Baxter, Warren, Pipestone, Morris, and so many others. Thanks to your belief in the power of stories, your commitment to the importance of representing all voices and cultivating readers, people of all ages across our state are connecting through programming like Moving Words and the Minnesota Book Awards. Thank you again for your support of the Minnesota Book Awards. Now, it occurs to me that we also are really grateful to our streaming sponsor for helping us to make this magic happen. Metropolitan State University, University of St. Thomas, and United Strategies. We want to thank you for all that you do. We want to thank you. We're grateful to you. Minnesota Book Awards and the Friends, too. We thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> thank you, T. Michael. You're welcome. <laughs> I echo T. Michael's thanks, and I hope that there's more of that later. <laughs> uh, now we have the Memoir and Creative Nonfiction Award. This is a category sponsored by Bradshaw Celebration of Life Centers. Here are this year's finalists. All the Wild Hungers, A Season of Cooking and Cancer by Karen Babine, published by Milkweed Editions. Magical Realism for Non-Believers, A Memoir of Finding Family by Annika Fajardo, published by University of Minnesota Press. The Memory House by Rocky Kopernik, published by The Muriel Press. And The 29th Day, Surviving a Grizzly Attack in the Canadian Tundra by Alex Messenger, published by Blackstone Publishing. Okay, now, the award goes to... Uh, okay. For memoir and creative nonfiction, it goes to Karen Babine, All the Wild Hungers, A Season of Cooking and Cancer. Wow. Karen, are you with us? I am here. What a sensational opportunity for us to, to, to thank you and congratulate you that you're here with us. Oh, thank you so much. This is such an honor. Um, such a great category to be a part of, um, and, and what a thrill to, to be able to honor my mom uh, in this way. Yeah. Um, I didn't really start cooking until a few years ago, uh, and when I did, uh, it really just unlocked how many food stories there were in my family, um, and I was thinking um, that, you know, in these, in these days, uh, when I was a kid, um, we'd be going to... Um, uh, plant our giant vegetable garden, and my mom would let us have uh, a row of our own and uh, let us plant anything that we wanted to in it. Uh, and so I was thinking today about this time of deep anxiety and, and how food can be some, some ways that we love each other uh, and connect, especially across distances. That's beautiful. You know, and at, in a time when we think about the power of Victory Gardens, what a victory for you to celebrate your mother with this book Absolutely. and to also be a recipient. Thank you again. Thank you. Let's go back to the beginning, or beginning readers, that is, with the award for children's literature sponsored by Books for Africa. The finalists for children's literature are Ada Zhao, Playing with History at the American Swedish Institute by Nate Christofferson and Tara Sweeney, published by the University of Minnesota Press. Home in the Woods by Eliza Wheeler, published by Nancy Paulson Books, Penguin Random House. A Map into the Woods by Kao Kalia Yang, illustrated by Seao Kim, published by Carol Rode, Rhoda Books, Learner Publishing Group, and... My Footprints by Bao Fi, illustrated by Basia Tran, published by Capstone Ed Editions and Capstone. The award goes to... Okay, here we are. The book award for children's literature goes to Kao Kalia Yang, A Map into the World. Wow, now that's exciting. 
Cal, are you with us? I am. Congratulations. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. And well, um, ought to be. What a great book. Oh, thank you. I really want to thank the Minnesota Book Awards for giving so many of us an opportunity to look forward to something special. And then my fellow finalists and all of the other children's book authors across Minnesota, thank you for inspiring me, educating me, and elevating my work. I truly believe in the work that we're doing. Carol Hins and the, the team at Learner for the opportunity and the gift you've given me. Bob, I know you're not feeling really good right now. I want to honor the stories that you've kept and the heart that you've stored them in because it's a beautiful place. And then all of the children and the teachers right now, the teachers who light up their hearts so that children have direction in these hard times and for the children who are leading us with tenderness and love toward a future that we can all believe in. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for your passionate and, and emotion-drenched statement. It, talks, it speaks to us and to our viewers and listeners about your passion for writing and the importance of what your, re your writing does for our readers and for our community. Thank you so much, Kalia. Now, we have two more special awards, beginning with the Book Artist Award, which honors a Minnesota book artist for the excellence of a new work and contributions to Minnesota's book arts community, sponsored by Learner Publishing Group and presented with Minnesota Center for Book Arts. We have a brief video message from two-time Book Artist Award winner Jody Williams and a look at an extraordinary recipient for this year's award, My Mighty Journey. Jody here with a huge thank you to everyone connected to the Minnesota Book Awards and especially to those who are making this virtual ceremony happen. I am thrilled that My Mighty Journey is the 2020 Book Artist Award winner. Created by Gaylord Chanelek with the help of many brilliant assistants, it is a masterpiece. Its poetic text was written by John Coy from the perspective of St. Anthony Falls. To me, St. Anthony Falls always seemed a poor excuse for a waterfall, but I learned from my mighty journey that it is the only major waterfall on the Mississippi and that it has slowly traveled from St. Paul to Minneapolis over the past 12,000 years. A mighty journey indeed. And Gaylord Chanelek, was the perfect artist to convey that journey, given his extensive knowledge of the Mississippi and his expertise as a wood engraver. Gaylord also had the good sense to gather together an amazing group of artists to help bring the book and John Coy's writing to life. My Mighty Journey is beyond description. Words and images cannot convey its majestic presence. Exploring the physical object is an awesome experience, and I hope that anybody who has not yet turned its pages gets to do so in the near future. While I am happy to have this opportunity to talk about my mighty journey, it is with a bit of sadness because I am unable to physically pass on to Gaylord the stunning tiara that Erica Spitzer Rasmussen placed on my head last year. Although I must admit that I don't really mind hanging on to the tiara for now. Nothing like a man with a tiara to just to brighten up your day. <laughs> Congratulations, Gaylord and team. That book just is remarkable. What an amazing piece of art. It is. And I mean, just the fact that the Center for Book Arts came together and collaborated on such mm -hmm. a curation of beautiful um, text and mm -hmm. story. Okay. Now, our next special award is for the, the Hognander Minnesota History Award.
a biennial award for a full-length book of scholarship on the topic of Minnesota history, funded by the Hogue Nander Family Foundation. The inspiration of Orville Joe Hogue Nander uh, was that this award stems from his family's belief in the importance of studying and preserving history and their long-standing relationship with the Minnesota Historical Society. Let's hear from this year's honoree, William D. Green, author of The Children of Lincoln, White Paternalism and the Limits of Black Opportunity in Minnesota, 1860 to 1876. Good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to share a few words of thanks for this incredible recognition of my work that sought to understand the challenges of truly becoming a multicultural society. As my book begins in 1870, when the supporters of African Americans ratified the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments, as well as various civil rights enactments, a wave of white supremacy swept through the South, seemingly unimpeded, and at the same time, the practice of Jim Crow remained the social custom throughout much of the North. Notably, it all occurred on the watch of Lincoln Republicans, the children of Lincoln, as Frederick Douglass called them, for they seemed oblivious to their abandonment of the people they had once championed, people now silenced by an expectation that they, these freed men and women, should forever be grateful. It was within this context that parallel worlds would form between so-called friends, black and white. Within this context, the humanity and vision of the martyred president would be forever frozen within a bronze memorial. Within this context, we see that the best way to slow the impetus of our heroic efforts is to become complacent. I wanted to know whether the same dynamic was at play in Minnesota. This is why I wrote The Children of Lincoln. I want to thank the friends of the St. Paul Public Library for supporting the work of the Minnesota Book Awards and most especially the Hognander Family Foundation for celebrating Minnesota scholarship in history. I feel deeply honored to receive your recognition through this award. Congratulations, Bill. Now let's dive into general nonfiction, a category sponsored by BrainFuse. Here are the finalists. America for Americans, a history of xenophobia in the United States by Erica Lee, published by Basic Books. Consider the platypus, Evolution Through Biology's Most Baffling Beasts by Maggie Ryan Sanford, illustrations by Radhika Preto, published by Black Dog and Leventhal. Eight Years to the Moon, The History of the Apollo Missions by Nancy Atkinson, published by Page Street Publishing Company, and The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee, Native America from 1890 to the Present by David Troyer, published by Riverhead Books, Penguin Random House. Over to you, T. Michael. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Getting better at it. I know I'm getting better at this. Huh? <laughs> it looks like the, gen the general nonfiction award goes to. You know, I was just thinking. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> this is David Troyer. What a, what a great one. The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee, Native American from 1890 to the present. Hey, David, are you there with us? I sure am. Congratulations. Sorry, sorry for that little <laughs> pregnant pause there on you, man. Just, <laughs> no. Just, you know, it takes a lot to make me speechless, but I'm, I'm speechless. Oh, and come happy. on. <laughs> well, I sh I'm sure that you can share a little bit about this book and what brought you to, to create this um, incredible piece of history and narrative. Well, you know, this book was many, many years in the making. It was also many years overdue. Um, <laughs> I kept delaying and delaying because my life got in the way. And um, so when it, it finally finished and it seemed to have, seemed to have found a home in, in people's minds, if, if not their hearts, um, it was, uh, it felt really, really good. But, you know, I have to say that, you know, the, the issues I was talking about in that book and sort of 
the reminder to myself and to my community and to, to America at large that Native American people are alive and authors of our own history um, was uh, a really important point to make. And so I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy um, that the book exists and that um, I'm being honored by my, my home state. Excellent. Well, we're very honored to have you as one of our recipients this year, and thank you for your wonderful and remarkable text and your book. Thank you again. Now, thank you all so much. Absolutely. Take care. You too. Remember to register to, for a set of winning books um, and comment on, the, on social media for us, would you? And for the next award, we have Young Adult Literature. The category is sponsored by United Educators Credit Union. The finalists for Young Adult Literature are Catfishing and Catnet by Naomi Kritzer, published by Tortine Macmillan Publishing Group, Cracking the Bell by Jeff Herbach, published by Catherine Tejan Books and Harper Collins. Last Things by Jacqueline West, published by Green Will Willow Books, Harper Collins. The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Jananda Petrus, published by Dalton Books, Penguin Random House. All right, what do you think? Okay. All right. The award for young adult literature goes to Naomi Kritzer, Catfishing on Catnet. Wow. And do we have Naomi on the line? What do you think, Naomi, about this award, award opportunity? I, I'm so excited. I'm thrilled. I, <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, I just, I, I just, you know, I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> and uh, I really, I really appreciate this. And I'm, I feel so honored. And um, uh, I just, uh, um, I want to thank my my editor and my agent and my uh, amazing writers group, The Weirdsmiths, and my husband, Ed, who is watching it from the next room, and uh, my two children, Molly and Kira, and my cat, who's yowling at me right now in the room. <laughs> well, Naomi, congratulations to you, and thank you once again. And we can tell just by your enthusiasm how excited and how surprised you might be, but you're well-deserving. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> the cat had to have the last word. Speaking of the last word, I'm not going to get the last word in because there's so many other award recipients, but being here, listening to the responses of finalists, and knowing about all these great authors, it gives me a chance to recognize the amazing strength and spark of creativity that we find here in Minnesota through our authors. And when I think about the spark and being able to really uh, illuminate those sorts of creative talents. <laughs> well, it kind of brings me into a song. You want to hear it? Here it go. Wait a minute. You've got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You got to spread joy up to the maximum, bring gloom down to the minimum, and have faith of pandemonium's liable to march upon the scene. To illustrate my last remark, Joni in the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? Man, they said you got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In-Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In-Between. Well, don't mess with Mr. In-Between. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Why, thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, T. Michael. I think that you are a perfect person to be spreading some joy in Minnesota tonight. I also want to say thank you to everyone watching tonight. I think that, T. Michael, they have taken you up on your challenge because I was just texted that our donations raised so far tonight total $7,400. So I think that 
that they want to raise $10,000, maybe. I feel like it's in the house, and we need to make that happen. <laughs> so thank you so, so much to everyone who has donated so far tonight. We really, really appreciate that you make this program possible. That's right. Your generosity makes a great difference. And as Elaine's already said, we thank you immensely. <laughs> now that I've got, um, your, got that out of my system, I didn't have to read that. I could actually say that. <laughs> I got that out of my system. <clears throat> We can move into our last set of awards, starting with novel and short stories sponsored by College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. Here are this year's finalists. Evidence of V, a novel in fragments, facts, and fiction by Sheila O'Connor, published by Rose Metal Press. Stray by Nancy Houdin, published by Nine Star Press. Suicide Woods, by Benjamin Percy, published by Gray Wolf Press, and The Tender Land by William Kent Krieger, uh, Kruger, rather, excuse me, published by Atria Books, Simon & Schuster. Okay. What do you think? You ready? I am ready. Okay. I'm ready. The award for novel and short story goes to Sheila O'Connor, Evidence of V, a novel in fragments, facts, and fictions. Oh. And Sheila? Yes. Here it I'm is. Here. <laughs> Thank you. You're Thank welcome. Thank you so much. They're cheering in the next room over great, here. Uh, it's wonderful. Thank you. I, I want to just say thank you to um, all the readers who made a space for this history and all the people who believed in this book along the way, especially my family and my friends and my fellow writers, the Minnesota State Arts Board and Rose Metal Press for bringing um, this work without any boundaries into the world. This is uh, a win for me and it's a win for all the girls and women who have had their stories erased past and present and for the tens of thousands of girls unjustly imprisoned across the United States. You can see I'm <laughs> emotional about this win um, and winning for the girls. And I, I want to really thank my mother and her mothers uh, for surviving this and for all the ways they triumphed and for giving me their gifts of strength and curiosity and rebellion. Mm. Thank you. You're very welcome. And what a triumph indeed. Thank you for your Thank poignant Thank you so words. much. Have a beautiful rest of your evening. Congratulations. We're lo we love watching you here. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Sheila. Thank you. We only have... Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. We only have two awards left. And thank you for being here with, this, uh, with us for this virtual evening, if you will. We are also very grateful that you decided to spend time celebrating Minnesota books. Please keep those social comments coming. Maybe you can um, share a, a toast or a picture of what you're wearing or something of that effect. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for your generous donations. If you've enjoyed this program tonight and want to show your thanks, please consider making a gift of some sort. And let's see here, how do they do that again? Ah, they do that by text to give or online donation instructions, which are in the event description on YouTube. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. So, our penultimate award is for poetry. This is a category sponsored by Wellington Management. This year's finalists are Bodega by Su Wong, published by Milkweed Editions. A Bony Framework for the Tangible Universe by D. Allen, published by The Operating System. Mitochondrial Night by Ed Bach Lee, published by Coffee House Press. And Safe Houses I Have Known by Steve Healy, published by Coffee House Press. Over to you. Over to me. Mm -hmm. The award for poetry. Oh, well, this is getting a little easier for me. Right. Sue Wong for poetry, Bodega. Congratulations, Sue. This is phenomenal. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, holy shit. <laughs> Why not? Why not that on, on, on our cast? Why not? Uh, 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 this is amazing. Um, I can't believe it. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much. Um, first, I want to just congratulate and thank my fellow finalists, um, my dear friend Dee Allen, um, amazing poets, Ed Buckley and Steve Healy. Um, I'm just honored to be 
to have, you know, shared this experience with them. And um, I'd like to thank my family, my parents, um, without their love and sacrifice. Obviously, the book wouldn't have happened. Um, and everyone at Milkweed, past and present, um, they're, they're amazing press, and I'm just really honored to be part of um, the Milkweed family. And um, lastly, I just want to say, as we lament the second month of lockdowns, um, I'd like everyone listening to consider what it would feel like after 20 years. And um, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic, but I know many amazing human souls who have been or, and are enduring this cruelty in the name of so-called justice. And um, there are 2 million people incarcerated in this country. And as we try to reimagine a better, more equitable world, I hope um, that this pandemic will shine a light on issues that have been hidden on purpose and that we can truly transcend the dark ages um, and how we treat one another. And so I'd like to dedicate this award to all the amazing people I work with um, at with um, at the Minnesota Prison Writing Workshop and to all the students who have been Bodega's biggest cheerleaders. And um, yeah, so this award is for them. So thank you Great. so much. Sue, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you, you, you raised so many uh, very important uh, points in your, in your acceptance speech and things for us all to consider. Now we've arrived at what you've um, We've arrived at what we might call the last, we won't might call it, we will call it the last award of the so. evening. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yeah. How about we do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. The category is sponsored by McAllister College. It is for genre fiction. The finalists are Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James, published by Riverhead Books, Penguin Random House. The Body Keeper by Anne Frazier, published by Thomas and Mercer, Amazon Publishing. Ice Cold Heart by P.J. Tracy, published by Crooked Lane Books. Nothing More Dangerous by Alan Eskins, published by Mulholland Books, Little Brown and Company. And the award goes to... Okay, the last one of the, the night. One. The award for genre fiction goes to Marlon James, oh. Black Leopard, Red Wolf. All right. All right, do we have you on the line, Marlon? Mr. James, are you there? I well, am, I'm here. Hey, what a, great, what a great honor it is for me to be able to, to acknowledge this award by someone who is not only a phenomenal writer, but an awfully cool cat. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So say some more about the book and let us hear from you about accepting this award. Uh -huh, more about the book. Um, you know, this book started, started out as a, a kind of an argument I had with some people over uh, traditional fiction. Um, you know, which is usually set in Europe, European cities or European realities. And, you know, I mean, growing up as a fantasy nerd, I remember at some point, you know, realizing that to enjoy this genre is to, is to enjoy a genre that I'm rarely in. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, a lot of this happened as a result of just doing that. But, um, it ended up being a sort of an African fantasy speculative fiction thing, mostly because I went searching for my own mythologies. And I think um, ultimately that's what we're doing when we write speculative and sci-fi and fantasy. When we make things up, we're just trying to create our own mythologies. And that's what I set out to do. Excellent. Hey, is there anyone you want to thank or acknowledge as we head out of this award category? Oh, wow. Um, you know, of course, I'll thank my, and my long-suffering editor, because this was in an English which he has never seen before, so I have to give him, you know, give him props for that, and um, my agent, and also, you know, my um, long-suffering suffering writing assistant, Jeffrey Bennett, who is a native of Minnesota, he's from Edina, and, you know, and, and um, many of through McAllister, and, um, and he's still... You know, I'll call him and go, the Zosa, the Zosa tribe. I need everything and I'll get it in a day. <laughs> so, um, you know, just thanks to, to, um, to him and just the, the many ways in which the um, just, you know, Minnesota and Minneapolis and St. Paul just keep nourishing and encouraging and just sort of, you know, setting a fire to my talent. Well, you set a fire on us, Martin. Thank you so very much for your inspiring works and for being one of our recipients, not a finalist anymore, but a recipient of a Minnesota Book Award. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Well, thank you, and thanks to the Minnesota Book Award. Have a great evening. 
Okay. Now, there's something about how fun this has been for me. I hope for you, Elaine, as well. It has been fantastic for me as well. And I hope for everyone who's been tuning in, celebrating Minnesota Voices, despite this current challenge and this, well, distancing, if you will. Congratulations to all of tonight's winners and the finalists for their extraordinary work and for sharing their stories with us. Don't forget now, don't forget to register that you've attended tonight's event for a chance to win a set of these fantastic books. Now, if you're wondering what books we're talking about, every winner in every category, so you'll get nine, nine books. Nine books plus the Hognander Award winner, so. Come on now, yeah. you can open up your own library. <laughs> Now, we want to, the link is open through the rest of the evening, so make sure you go ahead and make sure your, your uh, attendance is, is recognized mm -hmm. through the Friends website. Thank you again to our presenting sponsor, Education Minnesota. We would like to extend thanks to our local independent booksellers, Red Balloon Bookshop. Please buy some of the books from finalists that we honored tonight from them. That link is still on the screen. Thank you. Thank you to Kate Deanhart, Chair, and all the members of the Center for the Book Committee for their guidance and dedication. Let me also recognize the staff of the Friends of St. Paul Public Library and the judges, the panelists, and other volunteers as well, and all of our financial sponsors. Also, we have to give a huge, huge thanks to SPIN, St. <laughs> Paul Public Net, St. Paul Network, Neighborhood Network, SPNN. I had to try to say that, but I should have left it alone. <laughs> um, especially Steve Brunsberg for helping to get tonight's event into your house. And I'm going to jump in here, and um, I just want to say thank you, T. Michael, oh. so, so very much. I cannot imagine another person with whom I could share this evening. Thank you. And I hope that the next time you're connected with the Minnesota Book Awards, it's as a finalist or a winner for your children's book. Oh, thank you. And one more final shout out. I was texted earlier again that now we have topped $8,600 for our donations. So thank you so, so very much to everyone who's supporting the program tonight, both in terms of financial contributions and just by watching us and supporting the books in this state. And tonight, the evening is still young. There's still <laughs> time to reach that $10,000 mark. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to all of you for being a part of the 32nd annual Minnesota Book Awards. We usually have an epilogue after party at this point, so um, what I'll have to do is I hope that you'll join us in raising a glass. Here we go. Here we go. Having a virtual toast to this amazing work, and to all these amazing writers that we've honored this evening. <laughs> Thank you again for being here with us. Good night and good reading. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.